Hey guys, it's Exa and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are subscribed and watched my last video, then you know I am recording the intros for them at the same time. Um, yeah, I've actually been working on both of these projects for like a month and I just never got around to finishing them and finishing editing and filming. Um, but here we are, today is the day. Um, we are edited, we have posted the first one last week, so now we will be posting this one. Um, so this is another fun uh, Christian Louboutin heel DIY. I really, really love the spiked Pagal pumps. They are so cool and um, really beautiful, and especially the pair with the like crazy rainbow studs on the white, like this picture right here. Um, and I adore them, but I've never been able to find a pair that are authentic in my size. Um, they're one of the like most often replica style ones that you find on DHgate and Amazon and like really cheap on eBay and Poshmark. Um, and they're just really hard to find actual authentic pairs. So because of that, the authentic ones are really expensive and I did not want to spend that kind of money. So we are going to be taking a pair of um, authentic Louboutin heels that I happen to have laying around that are a tan color and turning them into a pair that resembles those spiked pumps. So this is going to be a quick, um, pretty quick DIY actually, considering most of mine involving um, like Sarasky crystals take me hours and hours and hopefully this pair will only take me like an hour or two. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the supplies and uh, get started. And I hope they turn out really great. Okay guys, so for this next project, obviously we need our base heels. I'm using an old vintage pair of um, Christian Louboutin um, Pagal pumps that I picked up. So we have those, and then since these are a tan color and not the white base, um, I do have some white Angelus um, acrylic leather paint with some paintbrushes. So we're going to cover them in this first, and then we will apply our studs. So for our studs to put on, I have a bunch of multicolored little conical stones. Um, so these are plastic, so they're going to be really lightweight and adhere to the shoes pretty easily. So to attach those, we will use some E6000 glue, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is just paint our base shoes white. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos before, then you know when you're working with the Angelus leather paints, you want to do thin layers, um, let them dry and stack them up. If you try to get full coverage on your first layer, it's more likely to kind of not adhere fully and sort of crack off, which we don't want. So as you can see, I'm just putting a thin layer over everything, knowing it's kind of spotty. You can see the brush strokes, some of the tans showing through, and that is totally okay. We're just going to um, do this layer, let it dry, and then keep doing a few more until we get the fully white color that we are looking for. So some patience is required when you're painting um, shoes like this. So once that first layer dried, as you can see, it's still really thin and the tan shows through. So I'm going ahead and applying my second coat on here. I'm pretty sure I will probably end up with three to four coats total to get them fully um, colored in the white so you can't tell that they were once a darker tan color. Um, so just take your time, be patient, let the layers dry, and just keep going with your thin coats until they are um, the color that you're looking for. So I did end up going with um, just three coats on here and they are pretty solidly white. Um, you can't really see the brush strokes anymore and that's what we're looking for. All right, so now that these are painted, we can go ahead and um, get started with our stones. They did finally come in. So I have a whole bunch of these little studs um, with different colors to try to mimic the rainbow colors um, of the example pair. So these are all pretty similar, except I did have a pink instead of the like peachy cream because I couldn't find one that color. Um, but I think this is going to turn out really cool anyway with just these colors together. So I did just mix all of them together. Um, for the record, I have 50 stones of each color here and I'm just evenly mixing them together because we're gonna kind of pull them randomly as we're doing the shoes so there's no need to keep them separated. So to get started, we're gonna use our E6000 and I am using just a Q-tip to kind of apply the glue. 
um, because we don't need a lot. You just need a little bit to go where each stone is and you don't want it to kind of stick out beyond um, the stones and cover the white part that's going to be the space between them. So I found using the Q-tip was really handy to just put a little dollop where I want to place each stone um, and then that way uh, it's really, you know, organized and, and confined. And I'm also using my Q-tip to kind of pick them up. Um, the surface gets a little bit tacky with a tiny bit of glue left on it, which makes it really easy to pick them up and place them where you want. Um, if you're finding trouble getting the stones to come back off of the Q-tip, then that means you have a little bit too much glue um, left stuck on it. Um, so just, you know, make sure you're using small amounts here and putting a little bit in the place for each rhinestone, and then you should be able to have just enough um, kind of tackiness left over to pick up each um, little stud and place them onto the glue on the shoe, and then you can kind of press them um, down to make sure that they're going to be sealed properly and kind of adjust the placement a little bit to get them in the right spot. So I am starting with the tip of the toes and kind of lining the edges as I go back towards the back of the shoe here, making sure that my spacing between each one is about the same distance. Um, you want to be really organized and methodical with this because they will end up kind of being in lines here. It's a little less random than most of my rhinestone projects tend to be. Um, so we are kind of going to start on these edges from the toe and sort of work our way back making sure that all of our spacing is even and they make those nice straight lines uh, towards the back. And as for the colors, again I'm just picking random colors as I go um, to just kind of get that mismatched palette. And um, you know for this it's totally up to you if you want two colors next to each other that are the same one or you don't want any of them in the same spot. Um, it's Again, it's completely up to you. I kind of went with the randomized motion, trying to make sure that I have different colors next to each one. Um, but, you know, if I have a couple next to each other of the same color, then it doesn't really matter. Um, it's going to look completely random and uh, kind of color splotchy when we are all done anyway. So you don't need to be super specific about your placement of each color as you're doing this. So once we did that kind of first row, then I went ahead and put my second row in, kind of centering them in between the first row so they're kind of like zigzag staggered you know you, you, you can see um, and just kind of working my way from the toe points uh, going towards the back here on those kind of angles following the shape of the pointed toes of the shoes. So just like the example pair, they do have three rows um, going up the sides of each shoe, so that's what I did here, making sure that they're all about the same distance apart and following the lines of the shoe um, up the angle towards the back. So as you start to get to the back, it gets a little more tricky because you're going to have to sneak in some extra lines, and I ended up with five around the back part of the heel here. Um, so I just kind of started on the top edge and then the bottom edge here like this, and then in the middle is where I sort of slowly turn one line into two to kind of split it apart and end up with um, more coverage to fully uh, go around the back. The more important thing here than having your lines perfectly straight is making sure that all of the studs are about the same distance apart because if you have a big gap between one or two or closer together than others, that's what's going to draw your eye to it and you're going to notice that more than the fact that you know one of the lines suddenly veers a little bit left. So here's kind of a close-up where you can see, um, you know, it did have those three lines around the beginning of it, and then I ended up with five lines towards the back. And you can't really tell um, where the lines sort of split and blended because they did make sure the distance between each stone was really similar. And once you do one side, you can go ahead and get started on the other side. Um, just the same process, just going down, you know, the other side of the shoe. And uh, just kind of keep chugging along until you finish up at the back. So once I get towards the back here, um, as you see, I'm just trying to make sure that these are kind of spaced out evenly. I have my five rows going all the way around the heel here. And I am kind of filling in this very last bit from both sides to make sure, again, that my spacing is even um, between the two of them. That's the most important thing is getting that the spacing between each stud is the same, not really mattering if, you know, the final line is directly in the center of the heel or a little bit off um, to the left or right.
And once you finish one shoe, go ahead and do the other one and you are completely done. Um, I think they came out so great. They're so bright and happy and vibrant and I really honestly think this is one of my favorite um, Christian Louboutin DIY projects that I have completed to date. Oh my gosh, guys, don't you just love how they came out? They are so magnificent. Oh my goodness. Um, I really love the colors and the spacing and they're so fun and happy. Um, really easy to do. And because the studs I used are plastic, they are super duper light. Um, <laughs> you have ever done like the Swarovski crystals on shoes before, you know that they end up pretty heavy afterwards because, you know, they're basically covered in a whole layer of glass. Um, but these are super duper light, really great for everyday wear. Um, and they're just in time for Easter. I mean, come on, these colors definitely scream Easter shoes. So as always, thank you for subscribing and watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, be sure to turn on your notifications because I will be posting some more videos coming up soon. Um, got some fun house projects lined up that I bet you guys can't wait to see. And uh, of course, you know, always have some more shoe projects on the way as well. So until next time, I hope your day and your shoes are as beautiful as you are.